everyone, good morning or afternoon, whatever time it is for you. It is Monday, uh, the 13th of September, and I hope I got your attention because we got two big stories to talk about for you guys today in regards to Nintendo and the Nintendo Switch. Uh, we got obviously a, another Wii U game uh, maybe coming to Nintendo Switch, at least someone wants to bring it over. Oh, and by the way, um, yeah. Remember last week when we talked about the rumored, I'm air quoting that, rumored price drop happening to Nintendo Switch today? It happened. Seriously, let's talk about it. Before we do, though, hey, we are giving away a Nintendo Switch OLED. That's right. We are giving away a white edition Nintendo Switch OLED. All you have to do to enter to win is hit that subscribe button and then <clears throat> show up to a live stream we are doing in early October. In fact, I think I'll finally get that stream set up uh, this week. I know I was going to do it last week, but I actually almost had the thumbnail and stuff ready to go for it. So yeah, tune into that stream. But first off, be subscribed uh, for your chance to win a Switch OLED. Also, by the way, being subscribed is like a, a minimum entry point for pretty much every giveaway we do. So even if you're not interested in a Switch OLED, we have other giveaways coming every single month. Uh, so stay tuned. We, we have quite a few big ones. In fact, if we somehow hit 100,000 subscribers at some point in this channel's life, there's going to be a massive celebratory live stream giveaway spree. I can't wait for that, but we'll worry about that when we get to 100K. All right, so our first story has to do with this game you see back there. I'm sure you guessed it because of what was back there. Um, Platinum Games was actually the lead developer behind Star Fox Zero, although Miyamoto was the lead producer. There was two producers and two directors. Miyamoto was one of the producers. Uh, but you'll see here that it's very clear Miyamoto had a major influence on that game, and we knew this back then through developer interviews. Uh, but um, what's interesting is that Video Game Chronicle sat down with, what was it, Platinum's, uh, you know, the head of Platinum Games, uh, Atushi Anaba, and asked him about bringing Star Fox Zero over to Switch, and here's what he said. It's not cool that people aren't able to play older games and that they're locked out of the platform. So, of course, if anything was possible, we'd like to bring over any of those older titles to newer platforms. Kind of depends on what's in the realm of actual possibility, but yeah, if the chance came up, it's definitely something we'd like to think about. So he's just talking about thinking about bringing over Star Fox Zero along with any other games. Um, but they were pressed on it a little bit and talked about if it did come over, you know, Video Game Crowns like, yeah, okay, but if you bring Star Fox Zero over, there's actually Wii U exclusive, like, stuff in the game. So, like, how would that be handled? And he said, the important thing to remember there is that because it's Nintendo's IP, the ideas are coming from Miyamoto-san himself. If the opportunity came up to bring over Star Fox Zero to the Switch, Again, it would be more of a question of what he would like to do in that opportunity. And of course, we would respect that again. So it's one of those, yeah, they want to bring it over. Yeah, Miyamoto has these unique ideas in there. We'd have to get approval by him on any changes we have to make. Remember, Star Fox Zero was kind of the poster child for Nintendo where they told Miyamoto to prove, because for those who don't know, Wii U was entirely Shigeru Miyamoto's idea. He was the one who pitched it and got it approved, and yet nothing really came out that really fully took advantage of that gamepad until Star Fox Zero. But then Star Fox Zero was not a commercial success, and maybe even ushered in the speedy send-off of the Wii U itself. Uh, even though I think Star Fox Zero is misunderstood, and actually a lot of fun in a lot of different ways, obviously there's a lot of these little quirks about it, that would need to be updated for Switch and might even make it a better experience for many people. Think how some people didn't like motion controls in Skyward Sword and now they think Skyward Sword is much better on Switch. Something like that could happen here as well. But again, it's one of those situations where Nintendo has to want it to happen first before Platinum Games could do it. But it does sound like if Nintendo went to Platinum Games and said, hey, we really want you guys to bring Star Fox Zero over to Switch, they are A-OK -okay with doing it. They just need Nintendo to tell them to do it because Platinum Games can't make that decision on their own, just like they want to show us Bayonetta 3, and they can't. So that's just the unfortunate situation of waiting for the parent company to decide when it's time. Obviously, I hope we do get Star Fox Zero eventually, just like I hope we get Twilight Princess and the Wind Waker HD eventually. I don't think any Nintendo-controlled IPs that are exclusive to uh, Wii U should stay there beyond a select few, like the original Splatoon maybe stay there because we have Splatoon 2 and now Splatoon 3 coming. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. That's just my take on that. Um, let me know your guys' take on this as well. Is Star Fox Zero something you even want to see on Switch? 
Or are you just hoping that if you do get Star Fox, it's something new and not like the N64 game rebooted again for like the third time? <laughs> All right, next up, we talked last week about a price drop. Nintendo Alerts uh, basically told us we were going to get a 30 to 60 euro price drop for the Nintendo Switch uh, in France starting this week. And we talked about how that might apply to a more worldwide price drop. because That's a pretty big price drop to be just for a single region. And turns out it was right to an extent. All of Nintendo of Europe has now done a major price drop on Switch, creating a bigger gap between what they're charging for the Switch OLED versus what is being charged for the base Nintendo Switch. Now, we have a lot to go over here. Um, this price drop has not happened outside of Europe, hasn't happened in Japan or the US yet, although I feel like if it happened in Japan or the US, we would get a warning about it first, maybe an announcement in a potential Nintendo Direct. Um, but it's interesting because the price drop is still technically more expensive than what Switch costs here in the US, but clearly exists for the Switch OLED. So. Here are the prices as we could find here. Uh, Nintendo of Europe is charging £259 in the UK on their official website because they do sell Switches directly. Um, and that's down from £279 uh, that was just priced yesterday and has been the price since launch in the UK because the UK does use pounds now. Uh, in all territories that use euros, Nintendo of Europe is now charging €299 euros instead of the €329 euros they have used since launch. For us in the U.S., uh, that launch price would have been $387 USD. Comparatively, and after the price drop, it's $352 USD. So we have an idea of what they have to pay for Switch over there. Um, and that $352 is obviously what we pay for OLED. Although of note, that pricing in Europe typically includes taxes, whereas taxes are at an add-on here per state. So um, it's still probably cheaper than we pay for Switch anyways. I don't think it's 350 with taxes here, but that's neither here nor there. Many retailers are actually undercutting Nintendo's price drop. In France, they are actually selling Switches for 270 to 280 euros, depending on the retailer. Other countries are sometimes seeing the same discount, sometimes even more. Now, Nintendo of Europe does list the Switch OLED for 349 euros. However, in France and some other countries, they are selling it for 329 euros, with a select few dropping it to as low as 309 euros. Why is pricing all over the place in Europe? That's something that most of us in the U.S. don't understand. How can pricing for this electronic be so different when here it's pretty much the same everywhere? It's very rare to see one retailer discount in electronic that doesn't exist at all retailers and have it be the same discount. Holidays notwithstanding, of course, we do get holiday sales. Um, and here's really what happens. Nintendo does have a set price in Europe, and here we call that the MSRP, the suggested retail price. Um, but that's because Europe is actually different than the United States. Here, the companies producing the products set the baseline pricing. In Europe, it's actually set by the distributors. So while, yes, Nintendo might have a price they can set for retailers um, to order each system, like it's going to cost, you know, Game UK X amount of money to purchase one Switch to sell, the final retail price is set by the actual retailers themselves. Profit margins are actually far greater for retailers of electronic devices in Europe compared to here. A large part of this is due to the exchange rates, but also because they are much closer to where the products are made, making shipping much cheaper. As such, retailers are sometimes making 100 euros of profit on Switch compared to usually just 20 bucks here in the United States. This gives retailers a lot more room to play with pricing to still be profitable but drive consumer interest. Naturally, they presume, kind of like the Walmart model, that if you can get them to your outlet to buy a super cheap Switch, you are more likely to buy other products from them, uh, from them as well. That's Walmart strategy. They'll get you in for the one thing and hope you're just going to buy other things along the way. Um, NOE's official response to all of this has been related to confirming a big factor in the price drop is creating a wide enough gap with the upcoming Switch OLED release, which again, they didn't think a 20 euro gap was quite big enough, even though that's roughly, after conversions, pretty close to the gap we have here in the United States. Well, obviously this is good news for, uh, you know, Nintendo fans in Europe who are looking to buy a Switch or get a second Switch for a partner, a brother, a sister, parents, their children. Um, it, it's another thing to, to realize, obviously, in the United States, that it's still cheaper to get them here compared to there. Uh, but, hey, this is good news for Europe and could suggest a price drop is about to happen elsewhere. Now, 
Here we kind of figure a $50 price difference is big enough, um, but also maybe not. And the thing is, if Nintendo Switch does drop the $250 USD here to match a similar price drop to Nintendo of Europe, it would create a $100 gap between our price and the price of the OLED, which does make the OLED seem like not as great of a value. If I had to guess with how hard it is to get Nintendo Switches, in fact, last time I went to Walmart in my area, again, my area is not representative of the whole of the United States, but it is a good representative of, I, I live in a relatively small town. If we have a hard time with stock here, I assume the cities might have a hard, a harder time with stock. There was a single Redbox Nintendo Switch available. There were no Switch lights. In fact, that Redbox Switch was the only game console available. Um, even the arcade one-ups were sold out. So like the arcade one-ups were sold out. Um, the Playstations were obviously sold out. The Xboxes are sold out. Um, and obviously now the Switches besides that one unit. So I, I find it really fascinating to examine the overall market in, the, in that way and realize Nintendo probably doesn't have to drop the price of the Switch this holiday uh, in the United States anyways to maintain sales. Uh, but it would be interesting to see them do it anyways to match the major price drops happening in Europe. Again, Nintendo is like most companies that cares about money, 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 money. And since the exchange rates still show that it's slightly cheaper to get a Switch here, even after the price drop, it more so seems like it's making Europe more price competitive with the United States. Uh, but again, their profit margins are much larger because it's much cheaper to get the systems. So it, it it's kind of um, a tit for tat situation. We'll have to wait and see if this ends up being applied here. Again, I always felt like if there was going to be a price drop in the United States and Japan, that would get a pre-announcement, um, not just randomly happen. Uh, so again, the next Direct might have it in there, or we might not get a price drop at all. But our friends out in Europe, you know, that are looking to buy extra switches, hey man, enjoy your discount. Obviously find the retailer, a legit retailer, who's giving you the best deal because the prices are going to vary retailer to retailer. Obviously, if you want to have 100% faith, you could just buy it directly from Nintendo, but you will be paying the most expensive list price. Um, so keep that in mind, obviously, unless you get a used system, and I, I'm not even sure what they're going for used off the top of my head. But anyways, this is really great news, obviously, uh, and we'll have to wait and see what happens to the rest of the world because all of us would love to see the OG Nintendo Switch finally drop in price, which could eventually lead maybe to the Switch Lite dropping in price, which of note, Switch Lite is not dropping in price in Europe, at least right now. We'll have to see if that changes next year. I always felt that the price drop for the current Switch model would happen next year after the holidays, at least here in the U.S., uh, because I don't think they're going to consider a price drop for Switch OLED until next holiday when they are fully in stock and I think not even making the current Switch anymore. Uh, but that's that's just that's just what I think. Maybe I'm maybe I'm going crazy over here. Maybe my logic is flawed. You guys, let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel Rubblejads from Nintendo Prime. Whew, I can't wait, man. I probably have at least one more video coming today. If not, we're probably going to be live streaming tonight. Um, my fiance is back to her normal full-time work schedule now. She has her restrictions, her lifting restrictions after her gallbladder surgery lifted. So she's back to normal full-time, which means we're probably going to be back to a semi-regular nighttime streaming schedule. We'll have to wait and see if I keep it that way. Uh, so we probably will be streaming tonight. And the cool thing is we have some brand new Nintendo Prime merch to debut for you. You can actually purchase the merch already at the very top link down in the description. Uh, but, you know, purchasing something you haven't even seen, even on camera, right? You just see it on a website. Uh, it's far different. So I'd like to show off some of that merch for you guys. Uh, start wearing it in some future videos. We got, we got a few different styles, a few different things happening uh, with that. And I'm actually looking into launching another new piece of merch. We've been talking about it for a long time, since E3, really, the hype responsibly. Still working on a perfect design for that text and getting that on on a shirt. So stay tuned for that as well. Anyways, folks, I am the Thunder Robo Jets from Nintendo Prime. And I'll catch you in the next video.